All right, hey, it's Aaron. I just turned 15. You know, the older I get, the more I'm like really wanting to get my hands dirty. So I found this new deal in our neighborhood. I think it's a good deal. You know, it's an auction for a house. Hey, Dad. What? You got a deal. You got a deal. You look at 300 emails a day, and maybe you'll find a deal. You ain't found me a deal since you were the day you were born. Going for 1.1, but it's going for auction on the 28th. Who's running the auction? Is it some private company trying, you know, you never know, you play little tricks? Is it the county? American Heritage. American Heritage Auctioneers. He's actually not a crook. Like the, a lot of them I ran into, this guy's pretty honest. I know him for at least 20 years now. It is 6,000 square feet. 6,000? I mean, to build that house today would cost you a few hundred bucks a square foot at least. So that's where a million eight, it was brand new, but it's not brand new. And it's not on the water, as I can see on the map. I mean, and when the market was hot, it was worth that price all day long. It's probably worth a million eight, but the market's coming down. Why? Because interest rates are going up and everybody that qualified for a million bucks can no longer qualify for a million bucks. They qualify for about half a million. So he lost a lot of his buyers. How low will he go? That's the whole question. Let's go do a drive-by. There's people living there, so we can't fuck with the place. All right, let's go. I'll even let you sit in the front today. You're gonna be the big shot. Going out into Bentley and finding us a deal to make some money. Let's see if Aaron can make us a half a million bucks today on a house auction. I'll be happy for 200,000. We all know why the mafiosos make him sit in the front. That's right, because you get whacked. How come Aaron ain't driving? I can drive. I can drive. No, I can drive. All right, I'll drive. I don't care. I'll drive. It's up to you. You want to drive. I don't want to be in front of you. Huh? No, you're yes. a big shot today. You can't drive. I'll drive. No, you got to focus on the road. I never thing. drive. I was going to sit in the back today. Like a big shot in the back of a Bentley. I found my next car I'm going to buy. It's called a Toyota, believe it or not. Toyota Century. You know what it is? Chinese Rolls Royce for half price. Well, no, you can buy them cheap once they're a few years old. But it has all like the luxury, Chinese luxury. I want to try it out. You can buy them as anywhere from cheap as 20 to 100 grand, brand new to 250. That's what all the big shots in Japan drive around in, they said. I've been great in investments, and I just want to touch base and see where things are at, where we can be in a position to help you. To You're going to help me. How come somebody ain't got no fucking money help me? That's what I want to know. You couldn't help yourself. How the fuck are you going to help me? You want to make money? Deal with people who are making money. I wish I could buy this fucking Publix here. That would be a fucking home run. Find out who owns that Publix, see if they want to sell, and how much they want. It's as simple as that, really, in real estate. You know, you can look up the owner of any property if you look hard enough. Some people try to hide, but you can still find them. And you ask them, hey, you want to sell this place? No, I don't. Fine. Move on. Oh, I want 10 million bucks. Well, how about nine? All right, let's do it. Done. You and your fucking backpack. You couldn't put it in a fucking trunk. You're such a Polak. You know, you can't even put your fucking big ass backpack in the trunk. Sob, drop the beat. This lady here, she told the broker, you can sell my building to anybody, but not that Ben Mala. You know why? Because I bought two buildings from her that were neglected. I fixed them up. She found out I made a, a nice job, profit on it. And she got upset. Well, lady, why didn't you get off your ass and fix up the apartments, raise the rent, and fill the vacancies and spruce the place up? Don't blame me. Don't hate the player, hate the game. You're going to be in the fucking game? Play it. So she told the brokers, you will not sell to me under any circumstances. Bitch. All right, here's the neighborhood. Uh, Look at that. That's a nice house. Nice house. These are like old ranch houses. There's the auction sign. Where's the house? It's right there. Oh, down, down that driveway. long driveway. Do not trespass. The big ass waste of front yard. You're on the wrong side of the road. You get a ticket right now and have your license. This is for suspended. business purposes. Bullshit. Only. Tell that to the cop. What are you doing on the wrong side of the road? No other house here is that size. If you look around, right? And you look at the size lot, there is no house here. 
Now he's crazy if he thinks that's the lot and he's selling it off separately. He's fucking nuts. No, the house, the lot that he's selling off separately behind his house, behind it, and she's still worthless because you still got to go down a fucking easement of a driveway you share to get to your house. So that decre- decreases the value. All right. Well, the house looks nice, been well maintained, it's got a nice roof. It's 1990s, big lot, good area. You know, not a, but it's still the white elephant. You know, could be spruced up a little. I don't know. Could make it gated. Throw 20 grand into a fence with an electric gate, you know, and make it more stately. But you still, you're the big macha in the neighborhood. Look at all these houses around here. These houses probably only go for about 500. So this one's double the price for double the square footage. Simple. Woohoo! Look at that, baby. Press a button. None of that pulling and tugging and all that. Hold the button and it closes. Matt, yes, when this part broke when we first bought the car, it was under warranty. How much did it cost to fix? Fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand to replace this whole thing. Thank God I had the warranty. What we're doing is we're educating ourselves and knowing the market. We know what the house has been sitting on the market for for a long for a while now. Now the guy's desperate. Why? Because he went to an auction. Why? Because an auction is going to guarantee his closing. So now, when people take their house, put it on the market, and then all of a sudden put it on the auction block, that means they need to sell. They may not be ready for foreclosure, or they might, you never know, but they're ready to sell. And that's when you can make deals. When somebody else is ready to sell, and you're ready to buy, you just gotta find a common ground. And what is that normally? The price. But if you got the cash to do a quick deal, that's what they're looking for. People will substitute Money for time, guarantees and time, quickness. Why? Because time is money. If they don't guarantee they got money coming in a week instead of two months, it's worth a lot more to them because they get that money in a week, they can put it to work and do whatever the hell their problems are or making more money. His realtor wasn't aggressive enough on the price. What he should have done was, I never would have put it on there for a million one. He's really serious about selling. He should have put it under there for nine, 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 nine. Why? Because when people go in the MLS to search to look for a house to buy, they're gonna put the price parameters in there. And the price parameter they typically put will be a category of people that use one million. So somebody will go in there, show me all the houses for under a million bucks, or 500,000 to a million. That's how they search for houses. Then if he would've put that thing on for 99999, he would've got a bite. But maybe I should've been a real estate agent. If you have a real estate license, and you're actively practicing real estate and making money at it, it is equivalent or more to a college degree because there's no limit to the money you can make if you apply yourself just being the in-between on other people's deals. Then you can also snatch up the really good deals for yourself. I mean, to me, if you got a real estate license, you got a license to make money because everybody's a prospect. Everybody in this world, living on this planet, some point in their life, they either want to buy a house or sell a house. And if they're in business, they want to buy or sell that type of real estate, whether it's retail, hotels, apartment buildings, industrial, it's, it's, it's tremendous. All you have to do is apply yourself and get around people that are doing it. Typically, you'll get 3% on the deal. You split a commission with another broker. If you're really a hot shot, you'll get five or 6%. But 3% on every 100 grand is 3 grand. You sell a house for a million bucks, you made 30 grand. What'd you do? You searched on a computer for a house for somebody to buy. You took them out. You showed them a few houses, the best deals you could find. They buy one of them. You made 30 grand. The title company of lawyers do all the goddamn work. All you do is initially write a contract up. And a lot of times lawyers do that for you. I mean, it's a, it's a career. A lot of these housewives said, I'm tired of sitting around a damn house. The kids are grown and they ain't got nothing to do. They can only play so much tennis. What do they do? They get their real estate license. There are women in my neighborhood that are making millions a year. Then they start employing other women to do it. And men. Have you ever looked in your cabinet and looked for a bag of chips? That's what I'm gonna do today. We have no chips. You always have these little bags of leftovers. Question is, are they stale or not? Number any more one, chips? Quiet, not, lady! Number one, you're not supposed to have any chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't even know what are you doing here. You got nothing. Yes. You don't buy no food no more. I don't buy what you don't need. Like, you're supposed to have this. Normally, we have, I'm not eating that crap. That's for birds. You're supposed, 
First, taste them because there's no point in doing it if they're no good anymore. Not stale yet. Dump them in there. They suck, but they're not chips. They're not stale yet. Good stuff. Pork rinds. Oh, I didn't taste it. I'll eat a stale pork rind. They're supposed to be vegan rinds, I say. Vegan? Yeah, let me see. I hate vegan. How could be a vegan pork rind? Tastes good. Is it good? It tastes too healthy. That's like a healthy pig. That doesn't even make sense. Are you telling me people that don't eat meat will buy something with a picture on a pig with a pig in it? Big, beautiful house, big, giant yard, extra piece of lamb. So what do you think about it? I think it'd be perfect for you. We could sell this house and move in there. No, that's not what you said. Take all that no, money. that's not what you said. You just said, oh, well, I think it's perfect for you. You didn't say for us. Listen, whatever goes for you <coughs> includes me. Because the property was so big, you could have a horse on it. <clears throat> want a horse? You want a horse to go with your bull? <laughs> you said a bull. <laughs> yeah, not a burro. A bull. I used to think the word burro meant bull in Spanish because she used to call me a burro. And I looked it up and found out it meant donkey. Come on, I didn't get no breakfast today. It's already lunchtime. You starved us last night with dinner. How did I starve you last night? Gave us a little bit of chicken and rice. Sausage and peppers, yeah. What kind of stuff you eat at carnivals? Step right up, get your hot sausage and peppers here, five dollars. And see the bearded lady. Carla, go put your beard on. have here today. For the first time, I get to see Ben's new car. This is my new toy, my 2022 Corvette 2LT convertible. buy this one out of my account good better yours than mine you know you gotta live life i wanted a sports car i always wanted a two-seater that's just me can get in by myself and go considering a huracan i was considering the tesla plaid a ferrari but ultimately after reviewing everything and looking at everything the technology in this car is way better than anything this is american made baby so if i break something I can get it fixed right away. Let's do the fat boy test wanting a sports car. Is that it's not really suited towards fat guys. Don't tell my dad, because he told me, oh, your knees are gonna go out on you. Just shh. You're gonna be weak in the knees, baby. I'm fine. You gotta have special glasses to wear this car. If all the right. car looks cool, you gotta look cool. And let me tell you, you need all the help you can get. <laughs> I matched the car. All right, so I get in right here, grab this and then lower myself in. No problem, right? Now getting out, it's a trick, okay? The trick is you take this foot, come out, you turn this foot, come out. Now you use the steering wheel and push. Now easy, try doing easy. that every day, in and out of that car for a week, three or four times a day and come see what happens. It's gonna keep me young. I don't know. I'm gonna lose some weight. You know, it's gonna motivate me to lose weight. Now when the top's up, that's a whole that's different a story. Hot. It's a hot day in Florida today. So now I go like this. Now I go sit down like this. How fat people drive sports cars. And then I turn. And now I'm in. Otherwise, you'll whack your head right here. And I've done it. Well, we'll see how long it lasts, folks. How long will he be able to lift 500 pounds in and out of a brand new Corvette? I'm already tired just doing that right now. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, thank you. All right, now we have Ray the Electrician. Currently released from prison on probation. The story is this big ass house a pain he has to maintain. It's approximately about seven years old now. These lights here are starting to look like shit. So we have to go around and see about taking all these lights and speakers because the paint's been eaten up by the salt air and have them refinished. I don't know how many lights we got here, and those lights, <laughs> it's only about what, 40 feet? 
All the ones that we can reach, how many you got here? Matt, you're in charge of counting. How many we got? Three guys right here. I see four. Holy shit, he's four. He was trying to help you. If the bid was three, Ray would have to do all four. Go ahead and turn it on. Let me see what it looks like when you turn it on. I don't care if the lenses look yellow. Oh, the light's yellow. So, doesn't really matter. Believe it or not, I don't think there's one bulb out. You're in luck. So, go through the whole house, all around the front two. Yeah, all well, these are fucked up up there. How are you gonna get up there? I don't know. That's gonna be a tricky one. Fucking house is way too hard to maintain. Holy shit, you said you wanted to go over deals? You wanna go over everything real quick? You can yell at me? I don't yell. And the only people I yell about are the people that I depend on. It's the other people I ignore. Because they're useless. They don't give a fuck. So I don't even bother talking to them. Because they don't care. They're just along for the fucking ride. <clears throat> anyway, um, that deal about the, the hotel in St. Pete, see if that chair will lift up, because I can't sit in it's too long. I need two new office chairs. Yes, sir. Because it don't pay to recover these. No, it does not. I will buy you. Believe it or not, I have a guy bidding on recovering them. Why? Because they weren't cheap with Mike Bonus, I think, boy. I bought these chairs. Uh, anyway, we tried putting patches on them. I see. you. you Even you. somebody in the video commented. You outlived. Welcome to an episode of Grilling Little Ben, or What's the Story? Where's the list of all the properties we own? Right here. So, me and Ben Jr. sit down, we go through all the properties. Make a list of everything that needs to be done and execute it. We're going retail right now. All right, retail. Retail. We got the liquor store. What the story is on that? So, went back to the tenant, asked for a little bit more in rent. They are working their financial model and supposed to get back to me. That was on the first. So, I probably should reach back out to them again and see where they're at. Because we don't have a letter of commitment yet. We don't have an LOI. The next step is to pull the permit. So I go down there, pull the permit, and start construction. The latest bid I received was $180,000 to- How much did it cost to do it in Tampa space. that time we split the space? 80. Why is it 100 grand more? Because that space was previously split. This particular tenant is really particular on what they want for an AC. So they want a brand new AC, so it's $56,000 in brand new AC equipment. For one little space? Yeah. You still um, gotta rent the space next to the liquor store. Yes, I gotta rent the space next to the liquor store. So you got a vacancy. Is anybody yeah. marketing it? Uh, we need to sit down and talk about the roof on that building. The roof? Uh, it's about time to start looking at bids to get it replaced. How much of a roof? All of it. The whole fucking place? Yeah. 83 lights. Can you take one down and see what it costs to replace them versus painting them? We got Tampa. Yeah, I got another roof leak. Big old leaks fixed. Well, I mean, it's time to start putting new roofs on shit. Well, you patch what you have to patch and you get away with it, and then you delay it as long I've as I've been patching can. that roof that I'm talking about since we bought the place. Get the shit happy users. I can. Try it. So what? I'll do that and then it'll leak in six months, and then I, I spend know. 50 grand when I gotta replace the well, roof. Well, figure out what we gotta do. You can have no roof leaks. What else? Rat problems? Done. What do you got there? This is a lie. Oh my God, take the cover off. <laughs> Can you put this back up there? Let me see what it looks like without the trim. Yep. I'll come out there and look at it. Englewood. Mm -hmm. I want to get out there and look at that lot and make a decision whether we're going to pave it or not, but we'll, I'll go out there. 18 grand for the plans. Oh, just for the plans? What about the landscape in there? It was like shit. All done. We, we, they're happy. The only thing they're not happy about is the one tree that's blocking their sign. Whack it. No, I'm not gonna whack it, I'm gonna trim it. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> that looks good. It's clean. Paint them or replace them. See how much those rings cost me to buy them? House, I wouldn't think twice about it. Yeah, see about painting them if you can't replace them. Find out what's a bit more cost effective. Powder coat them. That's called asset management. And I got two asses to help me. Where are we? We're at the grand opening of, oh, Gelato, baby. And here's the owner right here. Well, he is when his wife ain't around. So we're here at the grand opening and everybody, he's gonna give everybody free food today. So I brought everybody I could think of. Very good. Well, take care of your crowd and get this show on the road. Let's go, I ain't got no fucking day. Three, three, cut. Yeah! yeah! Well, let me tell you a little something about me. When it's Saturday night, I need 
to tonight. blow off some Because for what we did tonight, we took Jimmy Hart out to the movies. We saw their Elvis, baby. You know why? Because Jimmy Hart grew up in Elvis. Same town, same place, same everything. He taught us around the whole goddamn place. Can you shut up a recording? No, go over there. No, Jesus. it's public fucking property. That's right. You go over there. I'm referee and I'm referee and I'm Goddamn bums on the bench. We took Jimmy out to the movies. Because once a week, Jimmy gets to go leave the house. Hey, wait a minute. Who works for who? Do you work for Paulie? Has Paulie worked for you? <laughs> hey, listen, I get The problem you. is, people don't appreciate you after all these years. I'm going to tell you this. Like, he's talking to somebody so fucking important. This, this, Who are you talking to, Paulie? Who are you talking to? To Pudgy? Oh, fucking respect. I took him. You're fucking half fired. I Leave me alone. And she wouldn't stop coughing through the whole fucking thing. When I was in Memphis and he passed away, my friend George Klein, who was part of the movie, I got to see uh, Elvis when he was laid to rest in his casket at Graceland. I was one of the first 200 people in there. And I never will forget one thing, and I told Ben, his hands were folded in the casket, and he had a beautiful ring that said TCB, taking care of business. Did you enjoy the movie? I loved it. We well, I know, as soon as the movie started, he's got a big giant thing of popcorn, she's got a big giant thing of popcorn, and the popcorn gets stuck in my throat, and I go stop coughing. <laughs> You gave me popcorn, got stuck in my throat. No, you weren't shuffing the popcorn, there's a difference. You were like, <laughs> and the whole time. <laughs> it was a great movie. It was. I recommend it to everybody. It showed the true shit. They showed what a ruthless manager he was. They showed that he had drug use problems. They showed it all. It was a great movie because it felt like it was true, real, like Jimmy, real. Oh, and by the way, I got him and Paulie in on the senior discount. This <laughs> ticket was only eight bucks instead of 12. I didn't even check I could have gotten in as a senior. What's the story, lady? Nothing. You want a quick bite somewhere or what? I don't care, whatever you guys want. Is there anything open at 9.39 on a Sunday night? We've been in here for three hours and I didn't smoke a fucking cigarette. I sat still with quit. my mouth shut. He can quit. No, you were coughing, but yet. Yeah. All I gotta do is sit around and watch Elvis movies all day and I won't have to smoke, Let's right? Come on, here, Elvis. Jimmy. Close your own goddamn door. Yahoo! Adios, amigos. Bye. I'm just a driver. <laughs>